learning objective two in session 10 is uh, what gets included in our incremental cash flows and what gets excluded. First of all, sunk cost. If we have incurred some cost years ago, it uh, might have had a little bit to do with this project, but uh, since forgotten about it and uh, haven't picked it up recently, uh, costs have already been incurred do not include them uh, into this project analysis. So they we exclude uh, and ignore sunk cost. Opportunity cost, the cost uh, or the most valuable alternative given up if a particular investment is undertaken. An example is if you get up early for a class, 8 a.m., what's the opportunity cost of that? We all know it's sleep. So get some value out of that class. Uh, we do include opportunity cost in our analyses. Uh, erosion gets included. If you remember the Ford Expedition when it was first um, offered, it's a larger, larger version of a Ford Explorer, those big SUVs that were sold by Ford at the time. Um, if we would buy a Ford Expedition versus a Ford Explorer, then the Expedition uh, would erode sales of uh, sales of the Ford Explorer. So cash flows of a new project that come at the expense of the firm's existing projects, we would include that erosion in our incremental cash flow analysis. Uh, normally, these projects, when we start them up, if we're going to start a plant to build a new car, the, um, start up a new plant to build a new car, working capital is involved. What is working capital, again, from session number one? Current assets minus current liabilities. So whenever we start a new project or a new company, um, these things have to be taken into consideration. Generally, they're negative. It's a negative, a large negative amount of working capital for things like uh, inventory, and we'll have some things tied up in accounts receivable, possibly some small prepaid assets, uh, and then we'll have some liabilities, current liabilities going out to, cur um, um, to uh, add into the networking capital. This will be things like accounts payable, uh, notes payable perhaps, wages payable, interest payable. So anytime you have a startup, you should include some uh, amounts for working capital. Um, we measure cash flow when it occurs, not when it accrues in an accounting sense. We're interested in after-tax cash flows whenever we do this analysis. After-tax incremental cash flows are relevant.